Can you believe it? Here we are again and here I am again, but not for long. Sorry to keep reminding you. I know some of you are more than a little disappointed and I'm grateful for you all sticking with me through the 100 days plus of faith and corona that we've been through together. But it is time for you to move on. It's time for me to move on. So this will be the penultimate week and this week, sad to say, you'll get just two recordings. That's today, Monday, and two days' time on Wednesday. And I pre-recorded these a fair bit ahead of time because I'm actually away sailing with Josh, my son, and a good friend, Dave Brevets, taking a break. And uh, I have been so grateful for your company over these months. Felt like, even though you're remote, some of you have never even emailed me or used the contact box, naughty. Many of you have, and I felt like together, we've had a conversation, as the Irish call it, the crack along the journey together. And the goodness of God has sustained us, hasn't he? I remember a pastor friend of mine, Phil Norris, some of you will know him, he's an author and a Bible teacher. And he said to me very early on, he said, Dave, I don't think you should really be doing as many videos as you're doing because you'll not sustain it. And I was really grateful for his challenge. But you know, the honest truth, as I said to Phil subsequently, I appreciated his pastoral concern, but actually the grace of God has been on it. And by and large, it's actually been a joy to do. It's been easy to do. Yes, it's taken time, but the grace of God has been there. And I'm so grateful for that. Anyway, you're going to have a great interview today. Some of you wrote in, in fact, a good number of you wrote in after her last interview. And the interview is with Lynn Jones. Self-talk is what she's going to talk us through. Four types of self-talk. The warrior, the perfectionist, the critic, the victim. I think I've got all four. Lynn, does that make me very special? <laughs> it must do. I must be due a free session, surely. Many of you appreciated Lynn last time with her attitude of gratitude and the reminder to give thanks for at least 20 seconds or more and the importance of mulling, dwelling on thanks. Many of you enjoyed that. You're going to love this in a while. But first of all, we're going to pray. And we're going to pray for you every day now until the end of next week. So next week, you'll have three recordings, all three Interviews are going to be with uh, senior apostolic figures posturing us for what lies ahead. So I'm hoping we go out, <laughs> if not on a high, no pressure, Dave Richards, Steve Thomas and Alan Griffiths, but with some apostolic, faith-building, forward-looking, increase-orientated posturing. Anyway, that's next week. But let's pray today for our world leaders and yes, of course, we've got easing, increasing, and then spikes here and there in the UK. We've just had one in New Zealand. You've just had one. Of course, America's had a couple of states where they've had to retreat. It's all a reminder that we're not through this yet. So don't, don't let up on your prayers. <laughs> Keep praying for those vaccines. The Oxford vaccine, Imperial College, two at the four of trials. The Oxford vaccine, as you probably all know, is being dispensed in Brazil. So that should give a really good uh, data set to take us forward. So do keep praying, pray for one another. And remember our five a day all along has been to stand firm, look up, reach out, give thanks, make a difference. And that doesn't change, even though uh, we will bring this particular set of recordings to its natural conclusion. By the way, I will still from time to time do recordings. If there's something significant or important that I feel would help you, hundreds of you have subscribed to the YouTube channel. If you haven't, can I get you to subscribe to it? Uh, all you do is hit the little uh, part where it says subscribe, it's up on the screen now, and then please click the bell. And the reason you click the bell is it will alert you anytime I put out a new video. So it saves you thinking, I wonder if he did one and I missed it. All right, let's pray together. Come on now. Our leaders facing huge challenges. Black Lives Matter now morphing into black 
Trans Lives Matters and the LBGTW uh, agenda <coughs> rears its head. So let's keep praying. Let's pray that God will guard us from division. Uh, John Dubery wrote in, John, this is probably your last one, <laughs> unless you get one in for next week. Causing division, dividing people into groups, and the groups are all about me. And he's talking, of course, about various views in the body of Christ. For example, about gathering, not gathering again, uh, shielding, not shielding, the way we handle social distancing. And it's a battle for hearts as lockdown is eased, he says. We, your viewers and the country, need to hold on to the good lessons of lockdown. As choices widen again, let's not get swept up into something new that has the potential for divisiveness. Good counsel from John Dubry. Anyway, let's get into that prayer. Father, we pray for President Trump and the state governors. We're praying particularly for Texas and Florida, of course, but other states where there's a resurgence, a spike of COVID. We pray for Canada, Prime Minister Trudeau and his cabinet, for Boris Johnson, Matt Hancock and other ministers of state here in the UK. Father, grant them wisdom, wisdom with localized lockdowns as they become increasingly inevitable. Give the people of Leicester here in the UK grace and patience as they effectively suffer again with another lockdown. We pray for President Macron, Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Sanchez, Prime Minister Conte, Prime Minister Scott Morrison, Prime Minister Jacinda Hearn, Prime Minister Stefan Leuven. Father, grant all these and any other country you represent that I haven't mentioned, grant them wisdom with the competing cries for justice, the competing cries for action, the huge impact on the global economy and the individual economies. Father, in your mercy, we pray, lifting up holy hands for peace, for righteous judgments, and for safe, safe outcomes. Father, we pray too, in each of the countries that are developing vaccines, 150 in total being trialed right now. We pray for success, pray for this Oxford vaccine currently in Brazil. Grant it success, we pray. Let there be a solution to this thing. And Father, as John Newbury's just exhorted us, reminded us, would you help us not to enter into divisive conversations, maintaining unity, as we discovered the other day in Ephesians, in the bond of peace. Yes, of course we can have opinions and views, but let not divisiveness characterize this phase of our COVID journey together. Rather, let us learn the lessons we have learned. Uh, where the Queen here in England said, the streets are not empty, they are full of acts of compassion. Let us not lose that tender-heartedness that we had right in the beginning towards those in the NHS and care homes, key workers, neighbours, children. Let us maintain that tender-hearted response as we move forward father i want to pray for each of my viewers today i know some who have found these daily broadcasts a help a stick a staff on which to lean i pray you would help them in particular shift their leaning on this time together to shift it into their moments with you and being able to stand firm now without that staff on the word of God. And the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance on you and give you peace, especially those that have written in anxious perhaps about the end of these videos. It's not the end of God's love compassion, care, interventions in your life. Let the peace of God fill your hearts and minds. Now, stand firm, we better have. Julie Jubry, John's wife. Jubry's getting a double bill on this penultimate week together. We've done Psalm 62, verses 1 and 2, reminding you from last week, my soul finds rest in God alone. 
My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. Verse 5 and 6. Repeat it, believe it or not. You're going to get the same words again. Double whammy for the Jubilees. Double whammy for David in Psalm 62. Because verses 5 and 6 repeat the refrain. And if it's being repeated, it's for good reason. So let's repeat it. Find rest, O oh, my viewer's soul, in God alone. My hope comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall not be shaken. There's a promise for you. This video program is not your hope, not your rock, not your salvation, not your fortress, not even close. He is, and you will not be shaken. So then, on to Lynn Jones, and let's see how many self-taught categories you have. And if any of you claim all four like me, welcome to the very special club. Uh, Lynn Jones is a life coach with Rewire Life Coaching. We'll put the address up as we go through the interview. And she'll share some wonderful scriptures. You'll see those scriptures, as usual, in the little comments section underneath the video panel that you're watching right now. Philippians, Matthew and Psalms. And I'll put the Rewire Life Coaching with all its resources up during the interview. It's been lovely being together. Remember, the next video will be the last one for this week and then three more next week. See you soon. Take care. Well, it's wonderful to have Lynn Jones of Rewire Life Coaching back with us. Lynn, we had lots of good feedback about your interview on gratitude. So I right. think folks are looking forward to today. I know off camera, we were both talking about one of our favorite songs at the moment, The Blessing, and you, you wanted to mention something about that right at the beginning, didn't you? I did, yeah. Actually, when I was thinking about preparing for um, talking to you today, I kept thinking about the song, The Blessing, and it's just this incredible, uh, powerful prayer, isn't it? And one of the lines in it really stands out to me, which says, the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And experiencing peace, we know that passes all understanding is incredible. But I guess many of us at this time will actually be struggling to feel peaceful and access that gift. I think probably lots of the circumstances we're facing are so hard, loss, fear, experiencing huge changes. And for some of us just feeling so alone in that. And I think maybe just feeling really shaken and aware of increasing stress and anxiety uh, for lots of us. And I know that we've looked at, and I'm sure you guys have looked at, and we're all accessing different things we can do to reduce our stress, like exercise, you know, working out with Joe Wicks, there's lots of people tuning in and, yeah, and really- he break his arm or something? Yeah, he had a, an accident, his wife had to take over, I think, for a bit, which was a bit crazy. Um, and then obviously, you know, for me, we spoke last time about Thanksgiving, passionate about that, you know, practicing gratitude is an incredible way to decrease that stress to you know calm the threat response and shift us away but you know today I wondered if we could have a look at something else that we can use to help yeah before we get into that it's interesting uh, you've gone straight to the blessing and it has a particular resonance for our family you, you probably don't know because we've not told uh, many folks even though our families have been friends for years but every night and still to this day sometimes uh, either Jill or myself have sung that song over our kids, even as adults, when we've been together. Wow. And it's been a family blessing. We made up our own uh, melody to it, whatever that is, 30 plus years ago. And my grandkids to this day can still sing it and will sing it. So I think those words are so important. The Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace that wonderful all-encompassing Hebrew peace which is not just a, a feeling of well-being which it is but it's peace in every sphere of life in every dimension yeah. of life so take us into that then uh, Lynn how could you help us with that yeah so I mean today I thought if we could just have a brief look at our self-talk so this is what we say to ourselves so basically the conversation that we're having in our head and uh, I've got a simple illustration so I have here my handy 
here's one I prepared earlier, bottle of lemonade. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to imagine this is your life. And we just said, and many of us are feeling that, that life, it's getting shaken. And as we shake, as this bottle is shaken, the bubbles begin to fizz up, don't they? And if we thought about these bubbles being like our levels of stress and anxiety increasing, and some days things could happen, maybe triggering events. For some of us, something even just like watching the news will increase that sense of stress and those feelings of anxiety. So it's like your bottle gets shaken and it fizzes up a bit. But actually after that event, it actually begins to calm. We self-regulate and we start to feel okay. And we're back to a sense of still again. I've got two here, just in case you're wondering how I did that. <laughs> but, but actually what we know at the moment is that so many of us have so much more time, more time to think and a lot less distractions to take us away from our thoughts. And what we're finding is that we're ruminating, we're beginning to go back over and over these same thoughts. And this keeps those bubbles fizzing. And the more, more they fizz, you know, if I had champagne here this morning, you know, if we shook that up, the, the cork would pop and it would fizz over. And this is really the same with our thoughts. The more we go over and over, we're triggering that threat response in our brain. And we know what happens. We can't think, we can't concentrate, we're unable to problem solve, we might have difficulty sleeping, and we end up being far from feeling peaceful and calm. And I guess if you just remind us there, that threat response, it's that, that body's response to a perceived threat. You know, it, we um, prepare to fight or flight and we release into our body cortisol and adrenaline, which actually can be really harmful. It can impact our immune system, increase our heart rate and our blood pressure. And the same response is triggered by our self-talk. So we want to be taking some action with that. So what can we do about that then, uh, Lynn? Well, well, one of the first things that can be helpful is to just identify uh, the different types of self-talk. There are four main categories, really, that can be useful to understand. So the first one of those would be the worrier. And that sounds like, what if? When I keep saying, what if this? What if that? And many of us are really good. We'll, we'll problem solve. We'll take our fears, move them to concerns, like maybe you've made the decision, the kids are going back to school or preschool, nursery this week, or you know, when you made that decision. And you've let it go and you've, you've problem solved. But then if we start the worrier talking, the what if this, what if that, and going over, that's when we begin to build up that level of, of anxiety, that stress, and we come away from peaceful. You know, Matthew 6 says, doesn't it? Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? And one of the things I find really cha challenging is that actually worrying is something that we choose to do. So we can choose not to, and we can choose to let it go. So the worrier, listen out for the worrier, the perfectionist. This sounds like I should, I must, I have to. You know, we have these really high standards for ourselves, things that we feel we have to achieve, that we, we need to live up to. And when the perfectionist starts talking, listen out for those shoulds. I guess if you're now working at home, for example, and you weren't before, or things have changed for you to, to great proportion, you might be struggling and, and keep going over the, the, the old expectations that you had uh, on yourself. Another one would be the critic. And the critic just wants to beat you up. You know, why can't I get it right? Oh, I'm just such a failure. I'm never going to make it. And the critic gives themselves a really hard time. And we often do that by the route of comparing with others. You might be looking at what other, your friends are up to on Facebook and think, I haven't achieved anything. I haven't done anything. I'm just... Oh, I'm just rubbish and you're just giving yourself a really hard time and the fourth kind would be the victim and the victim really is you know I can't nothing will ever change this is just so hopeless for me um, and that's really sad you know when, when the victim talk is is really hard because we just feel so hopeless and like nothing is going to change and we we aren't able to focus on what we can do when we're listening out to the victim so they're the four main types I'm guessing uh, that in lockdown, the main one is likely to be the warrior. Yeah, I would uh, imagine so. It, is there any research out there on your four? Is, is warrior top of the list, whoever <laughs> calibrates the list? Well, I would have thought if, if such research had been done during this time, I think literally just agreeing with what you said there, that that probably would be the one that would come out on top. But I think... 
close to it would be the perfectionists because I think a lot of us are struggling to grapple with the fact that we aren't able to, we have such standards for ourselves in every area of life. Yeah, it's really it's very, interesting you say hard. that because we had Mike Fisher, who you pro probably know a couple of weeks back, and uh, he was talking in a similar vein, slightly different topic, but I had quite a few emails back saying, I constantly beat myself up. That was the phrase people actually use. So it had obviously, right. it obviously touched a nerve, I guess. Yeah. Uh, well, all very, all very nice to have four categories written down yes. on the paper, the warrior, the perfectionist, the critic and the victim. What on earth do I do about it? Why do I talk to myself anyway? <laughs> well, we basically, this is just what we do. It's our response to a situation. And um, we, we all have this dialogue going on. We all have emotions and we all have self-talk and it's individual to each of us. And so we need to acknowledge and understand that about ourselves, really. It's the way that we operate. It's just part so of who we are. Weird, uh, if no, not at all. Myself. Most of us do it in our heads. I suppose some people might do it out loud, would they? Yeah, absolutely. And, and ruminating sometimes we would do out loud. We'd go back over and over something with maybe with a partner, with a friend, we would keep on verbalizing the worries, but it, it is continually doing the same thing. It's triggering that threat response, you know, activating that alarm and stopping us from being able to access the front part of our brain where we problem solve and where we get perspective on our emotions. So, you know, we've got this stuff going on, which on one level, we, I guess, could control given a bit of time, but we can't control the fact that it's going to suddenly happen. That's uh, a function of humanity is what I, I hear you to be saying. Yeah. So what, what do we, we do with it then? Yeah, what we can do is just there's some four simple steps that we can do when we, we recognize, oh, I'm, you know, I'm feeling, you know, I don't feel good. You know, we're feeling shaken, that fizzing. And we can understand how to respond to that. So the first thing is to become aware. That's what we want to do. We want to notice when we're feeling stressed or anxious and then just ask yourself the question, what did I just say to myself about that? You know, what thoughts have just popped into my head that's just causing that fizzing, just starting to shake that bottle, if you like. So the first thing is become aware. And then the second thing would be to accept. So we don't want to judge our thoughts. And we definitely don't want to become angry with them because actually as we become angry with them, then we're just, it's like shaking the bottle a lot. You know, we're causing that fizzing to increase that sense Why of stress. Why would I get angry with my thoughts and what would make me do that? Um, you would probably get angry because like you just said, if we keep coming back to it, you know, if we yeah. keep going over it and we've recognized it before and then we'll feel frustrated, you know, I don't want to be thinking this way, but actually here I am and I find myself thinking this way again or, you know, continually. Uh, and my mind, <laughs> my mind's going ahead of you, but I'm grinning because I can imagine the perfectionist saying, I shouldn't be feeling like Exactly. This. Yes, exactly. Love it. You're right on the page. Um, but when we do accept it, it's helping to bring some distance from it. Okay. So we, yeah. So and then, number sorry. one was be aware. What did I just say to myself? Uh, secondly, accept the thoughts. Don't get angry. Don't judge yourself. Uh, yeah. So then three and four, Lynn. Yeah. So three then is back to those categories. It's so helpful to label what the thoughts are so that we are able to say, you know, oh, I, I see, I'm thinking perfectionist or, oh, it's the critic, you know, today or whatever, because all of those types of self-talk shut our brain down, our functioning brain, and we become stressed out, if you like, and, and we're fizzing, that fizzing is, is bubbling up. But when we label it, we bring this in distance from it and from the emotion, and then we're helping to calm the threat response, because when we label it, we're starting to be more rational again. We're seeing it for what it is, and we're understanding it, and that really helps us in that moment very good so the the fourth thing then really is that the kind of really important thing is you know that, that what action can we take once we've you know we become aware of it we accept it we don't judge it we label it and then what can we then go on to do to take us away from those thoughts and so very often just observing it and saying oh there's that critic and then if you add a little bit to that, imagine it in a, a thought bubble, if you like, let it grow legs and then just imagine it walking away when you observe it. Very often, just something as simple as that would, could be enough just to, oh, there's the critic. You know, I, I recognize I'm thinking, I'm feeling a bit stressed. 
However, that might not be enough for some of us, so we would need some other tools. So we could visualize a TV screen, for example, with our self-talk running across it. Imagine getting up, turning it off and saying, I'm not gonna listen to that anymore today. I'm not gonna hear that anymore right now. And we're, we're taking an action towards stopping that thinking. Obviously, you knew I was gonna mention it. We can practice gratitude because Yay. that helps us to shift away as soon as we start to do that. So even in a stressful moment, like we mentioned before, you know, just you know, thank you God for my coffee. Thank you that the room's not spinning. Thank you that you know, I can go outside and stand in the fresh air. Anything that you can give thanks for in that moment to try and shift our thoughts away is fantastic. You could do something like focus on your breathing, just count breaths in and breaths out, because as you're doing that, you're not able to tune into those thoughts because you're focusing deliberately on something else, like a, a mini mind mindfulness practice, basically. And one other thing which is, is so good is basically go and get involved in doing something else. So phone a friend, go and start digging in the garden and, and, and focus on what you're doing. Maybe go off and, and do something else. Go out and see if there's a, a neighbor you can chat to who's in their garden. Just do something completely different to distract yourself and move away from just going over those thoughts um, that are with you. That's really, really interesting. So we had an interview about Job a couple of weeks back and one of the things that has never left me with the book of Job is his situation turned so that God restored the fortunes of Job when he prayed for his friends. In other words, getting outside of focusing on himself and whatever yeah. was going on in him was one of the steps for his healing. So you've given us some tools here, Lynn. I'm guessing that um, my self-talk is actually my body's rather wonderful way of saying to me, David, you need to sort this. This is what we're picking up. Can you please sort this out? So I'm assuming that there's also some kind of action around the issue that is causing us to shake the bottle. So not just the self-talk, but the the issue itself at stake. So do you have any way of handling or changing or doing or agreeing with myself I'm going to take action? Um, so when we very often, so some of the self-talk, particularly the victims, so for, if we're thinking about, you know, there's just a sense of helplessness and hopelessness. When we feel that we are, um, you know, if we were processing the emotions that went along with the, the, the self-talk, what it was causing us to feel, um, then we would want to look at the, the final part of how we would process is what am I going to do? You know, what can I do? And when we start to ask ourselves that question in any situation, we go from feeling powerless to feeling more powerful. You know, we go from feeling hopeless and helpless to feeling more hopeful and that we can help ourselves to do something to take action. So without looking at a specific circumstance, it would be difficult to answer that question. And at the moment, because of all the uncertainty and the things that we can't answer and that we don't know, we might not be able to get to, you know, resolving every situation or we might not be able to, but we can still ask ourselves, what can I do, you know, and take action with what we can do and put, you know, the, the thoughts, the thinking around what I can't do, understand that and understand that's where we keep going and come to a place of asking, what can I do so that we can feel more powerful? So shifting fears to concerns, for example, and then what can I do? Um, does that help? Yeah, <laughs> very, that really helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So Lynn, we, we've talked about a number of these self-talk possibilities. And I know off camera, we talked about, for example, the worrier. It might be I'm worried about my pension on the stock market. Now there's nothing I can personally do about that other than adjust my self-talk and respond with one of your tools. But we also chatted off camera about actually worry sometimes is the body's rather wonderful way of saying, you need to sort this, you need to have a plan or you need to get something done. In other words, where it's in our control, actually stopping labeling the worry can then help us define what action we are able to take and you had a great example i thought yeah so um for example if we if we're worried when we're going out at the moment that we might come into contact with the virus and we might not be able to stay safe we can take action to 
be responsible. We could wear gloves, we could choose to wear a mask, we can wash our hands, we can stay distance from other people. And, and that could be a way of helping us to take action with our worry. Um, I hope that makes sense. But yeah. I think, yeah, if those what ifs are, what if when I go out, what if this happens, what about that? Well, we can take action and be responsible for that. Lynn, we're very nearly at the end of our time. Was there anything else you wanted to say about self-talk and the way we handle it? Yeah, I just wanted to bring us back actually to the Philippians 4 verses, if um, just to right. finish. And they're so well known and so helpful. We can draw out many, many things. But, you know, just wanted to highlight, remember it, act to acknowledge our anxious thoughts and then bring prayer and thanksgiving as a way to shift off focus and thinking to God. And then we are offered that incredible gift of peace that passes all understanding. And then in the next part, it actually goes on to give us some helpful things that we can think about. It says, finally, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, or admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So even if we're meditating here on that verse and, and wanting to answer those questions, what could we be thinking about that would be so completely different to focusing on that self-talk? And you know, as we become aware of our self-talk, that conversation in our head that takes us away from peace. But when we stop the fizzing, you know, I absolutely love the verse in Psalm 46 that says, be still and know that I am God. You know, what does being still look like in relation to this conversation, that shaking, that fizzing? Actually, when we calm the threat response and we shift away from that self-talk causing all that stress and anxiety, maybe we'll be able to access uh, knowing God in his still presence. I think that's wonderful. It's almost while, while you were talking, in fact, it, in my mind was a picture of leading my emotions, like leading a horse to water, but leading my emotions into green pastures, still water. And that's mm. what that passage in Philippians offers us with the things uh, that we, we can do. Let's just read this, and with this, we'll close out. And by the way, as I read this, folks, up on the screen will come the website for Rewire Life Coaching, which Lynn is part of, one of the coaching team there. And there's all kinds of resources on that website. So take a look. There's all kinds of videos and freebies that will no doubt help. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Really interesting, that verse there, transcends all understanding. In today's context, could be it goes above the warrior, goes above the perfectionist, goes above the critic and the victim. And then, as Lynn's just suggested, it gives us still waters and green pastures to lie our self-talk down by. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Folks, that's been wonderful. Thank you very much, Lynn Jones from Rewire Life Coaching. That's it for today, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Take good care.